Hey everybody, today's episode of Pool School is super important because today I'm gonna teach you how to test your water chemistry. Let's get to it. So, up to this point, I've been teaching you about your pool, the equipment, how it works, and all that kind of stuff. But today we're gonna to get down to the nitty gritty and we're gonna teach you the all important lesson on how to check your water's chemistry. That would include things like chlorine, or salt, acid, soda ash, bicarbonate of soda. These are the things that you might be adding to your pool water in order to maintain safe, clean water for you to swim in. So stay tuned and let's get to it. Oh, one quick note. What I'm not gonna do is give you some very highly scientific breakdown on how chemistry works and how your pool chemistry works. All I'm gonna do is show you how to test the chemicals in your pool and what you're gonna need to add to balance them out. Again, keeping it simple, it's really not that hard. Remember, if you're looking for some extensive how to repair and those kind of things regarding your pool, I highly recommend you don't try to take that on yourself. It's quite a chore. What I suggest again is that you contact a reputable, probably even a referred pool repair person who is licensed, insured, and bonded to do those major things. This again is about how to maintain your pool basically and simply, and it will still save you a ton of money in the long run. I am gonna use my above ground pool again to demonstrate how to test the chemistry. And again, it's pretty simple. It's the same for any pool unless you have some, some kind of crazy exotic pool. But even if you have a salt system in your pool, when you test your chemistry, you can use the same tools. The first thing you're gonna need in order to test your water chemistry is a test kit. There's two different kinds. Basically, there's strips, which is my preference, or there's the liquid test kits, which I don't care for anymore. Two reasons, they take too long, and the chemicals that are used in some of the test kits of those types actually cause cancer. You can look on the warnings and see for yourself. Anyway, the ones that I choose when it comes to test strip are made by AquaCheck. They are the AquaCheck Pro test strips. There's a hundred that come in this tube right here, and it tests for four things. It tests for total chlorine, free chlorine, pH, and alkalinity and I'm gonna put a link up here in the corner a little banner that you can click on and you can actually order these um, from a from a link that I have or you can check the description in the bottom of this video and there'll be a link on there that you can go to as well to order these again you comes with a hundred of them you test them once a week that's almost two years worth of testing if you test twice a week that's still almost a year, so that's pretty cheap. So this is what I use, and it is really by far the easiest, simplest way to do it. So if you wanna pick some up, go ahead and click on the link and order them, and let's get to the pool. Okay, so I'm at the edge of my pool, and I've already taken out one test strip, and I'm holding it like so, it's pretty easy. And you can see the four little dots on there, and they're gonna change color, hopefully. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it in my pool, pull it out, and I will not shake it. Do not shake the strip. I'm going to hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds and you see the colors are changing. Now I'm going to hold it like this and I'm going to tell you what each one of these little things is telling me. The top one, which is turning fairly dark green, is total chlorine. The one below it, which is turning very purple, is free chlorine. The one after that is the pH and the one below that is the alkalinity. Okay, again, top one, total chlorine. Next one down, free chlorine next one down which is slightly orangish red that one is ph and the bottom one is alkalinity a couple things to remember the total chlorine and the free chlorine will probably end up being similar and then same thing with the bottom two the ph and the alkalinity if your ph is high usually the alkalinity is high if the ph is low usually the alkalinity is low as well so now let's hold this up against my chart and see where we're at. Okay, so remember, I've dipped my test strip in the water. I do not shake it, and then I'm holding it accordingly, like with my thumb right here, I'm holding on to it. And then I basically take my tube and I look at it and I reference it based on what I've got chemistry wise. So if you look at the top, okay, you'll notice that there's these little ranges, like right in here and right in here, and here, and here, and it'll tell me where my ideal range is. So if you look at my top, 
my ideal range, I'm pretty much in the higher end of my ideal range. And during the summer, I like to keep my chlorine levels a bit high just because in the Arizona heat, we lose chemicals a lot through evaporation and just use. Notice the next one down, the purple one, that's the free chlorine. That's kind of in the high range also. Actually, it's in the top of the optimum range. And then if you go down to the pH, the pH is pretty much ideal, right? You see those, that little arrow right there? That's telling me that range between 7.2 and 7.6 is ideal. I think that's 7.8. And then you look at the alkalinity, and my alkalinity is a little low. But the other thing also is to notice, I've had this test strip st sitting out for a while. The thing about these test strips is they tend to get saturated, and after about 20 seconds, your readings are going to be less than accurate. That's basically the test strips and how they work. Um, I, again, suggest the AquaCheck because each test strip is going to be a little bit different depending on the manufacturer. But I found that these to be the most accurate. They're very cost effective and they're very easy to use. And the truth is, as you get used to using them, you won't even need to use this little reference guide anymore. You'll be able to tell just by your own eyes and your own experience of it where your chemistry is and you don't need to refer to the color chart because you'll know what colors mean what and how much of each. Generally speaking, if your chlorine is low, you're going to add chlorine tablets. If you have a salt system, you're probably going to increase the percentage or the output of your salt cell generator. The other thing, if your pH is high, you're going to want to add acid. If your pH is low, that means there's too much acid in the pool, and you're going to want to add soda ash, which neutralizes acid, or you can also add bicarbonate of soda, which also neutralizes acid. Bicarbonate of soda is much more expensive than your soda ash. And the other thing about soda ash is you probably don't want to put in more than two pounds of that in your pool at a time. It just takes a while for it to dissipate and it'll kind of turn your pool white and cloudy. So you want to run your equipment while that's happening. Same thing with the alkalinity. If your alkalinity is high, you're going to want to put some acid in there to bring the alkalinity down. If it's low, you're either going to want to add soda ash or bicarbonate of soda to bring that up a little bit. Usually what I tell people, especially if it's your own pool and it comes to the pH and alkalinity, you're going to want to test the chemistry after you add the chemicals back in to try and balance it, maybe a couple days later, just to see if your chemistry is balanced out and then add accordingly. Again, general rule. Chlorine levels low, add chlorine tablets. If you need to jump it up real fast, throw in a gallon of liquid chlorine or go to your local Walmart or Target or place like that, pick up a pound of shock and throw that in your pool. I also suggest that you always run the equipment for a couple hours after you've done that because it'll dissipate and disperse the chemistry better for you, make it safer to jump in after that. And then again, pH and alkalinity. If they're high, add acid. If they're low, add soda ash or bicarbonate of soda. So folks, that's basically how you test your water's chemistry. Pretty simple, pretty easy, hope it made sense. Again, if you have a salt system in your pool or a salt water pool, I'll be doing a series or a few videos on specifically how to deal with a salt system. They're a little bit different in the way that you maintain them, but one thing to keep in mind, even if you have a salt system, when you test with these test strips or even a liquid one, the readings that you get for chlorine, they will hold up when it comes to using a salt system tool. Okay, So you can use the test strips on a salt pool. I do. You just dip them in and it's going to give you the same readings. So you're just going to test the chlorine and that's going to tell you about your purifier. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me directly at kennypoolschool at gmail.com and there's the address right there. Or you can post a question in the comment section below this video. That's basically it for testing your pool chemistry. Hope it made sense. Please remember to like and share my video and I'll see you next time.